Thanks very much for your time, uh, Mr. Slengwa. So this weekend, that all-important elective conference, are you worried about uh, Ziba Giane uh, and him rejoining the IFP? Um, the IFP is very ready for this conference. Our structures, in particular our branches, um, have uh, all systems go. Um, the National Council and Extended National Council has met and deliberated on conference processes and I'm certainly not going to sit here and discuss Zebachi and he's not a factor. Um, he, there are far bigger issues um, going into this conference which will um, go beyond him so um, we can discuss other things but not Gian. Uh, Mr. Slengwa, we'll talk about Gianni in, in just a second because we're talking about all of the issues uh, affecting the IFP ahead of this elective conference this weekend. So uh, I'm not sure if you're trying to dictate the terms of our interview, but perhaps let's begin by talking about what you're saying those important issues no, I'm are. No, I'm not dictating the terms. I'm not dictating the terms. All I'm simply saying is that the conference cannot certainly be one person. The, as I'm saying to you, there's been due process which has been established um, through the branches, the extended National Council. The National Council will sit again tomorrow afternoon and the conference will kick off at 6 o'clock to receive the reports from the various um, structures and entities of the party that need to report. Principal Tillis will address the conference on Saturday um, and commissions will meet. We are discussing issues from the economy, jobs, unemployment, um, the environment. We're looking at issues of land, which are a very important factor. I mean, this point in time, laying a roadmap, really, for the IFP for 2021 um, and 2024 elections. You will recall that we are coming off the back of two very successful elections in 2016, where the IFP registered significant growth, and we consolidated that growth um, in 2019. Um, the Extended National Council, who um, has met, as I've said, um, and has looked at all the issues pertaining to elections. The districts um, have finalized all their nominations for the National Council. Um, and the extraordinary step really that the party took was to um, open up the processes not just to the National Council, but to the extended National Council as well um, in the build-up to this conference. So it's not a matter of me dictating the terms, but I think it would be unfortunate um, if the point of departure of our discussion would be a factor which is not a factor. All right, so is it a done deal that Velen Kosini Slabisa will be uh, the person who takes over from the prince? Well, given the fact that the extended National Council and the National Council itself, which are constitutionally mandated to process all nominations, have concluded on their work and are presenting these nominations to conference, as far as the party is concerned, um, we are in full swing to a smooth leadership transition and Comrade Labesa will be elected as president of the IFP alongside all the other nominations um, of the top seven and the um, component of the National Council, which is elected by the conference to make the complement of 100 of the National Council, which is the highest decision-making body of the party in between conferences. So this is where Ziba Gianni comes in. He says, he believes he's going to surprise everyone when he beats Velenkosini Slabisa for that top job. Surprise everyone just as he did back in 2004. <laughs> the biggest surprise will be on him. I don't think he's read the constitution of the IFP because he's such a well-traveled politician. Um, and is, for all intents and purposes, a visitor in the IFP. There are certain things which have changed in the party, um, the constitutional amendments of 2012 and so on. He wasn't there, you will recall. He's been away for 14 years. Um, the party is not going to subject itself to a ser serial um, political visitor like him, who's been to the ANC, the NFP, the DA, formed NADECO, SADECO, and PAC, and so on. So... As far as we are concerned as the party, um, Gianni is a non-factor. But I must put on record that um, we have investigated even the circumstances of his uh, uh, nomination. And so I challenge him to come to conference uh, as an observer because if he thinks he's coming there um, to contest, he's got something coming for him because there's a lot of irregularities on his part. And the other fact is that he does not qualify to contest any position uh, in the party as well. But of course, because he's not read the constitution 
um, he will he is then bound to tell everybody is going to be surprised. We are not worried about Tian. Um, he's a non-factor. All I can say is that it would serve him well to join the party and actually learn the rules and the processes uh, of the party before he says uh, he wants to contest. We are not going to, uh, as a party, subject ourselves to an opportunist um, like him. So, so let's talk about this just before I, I let you go. In fact, 44 years at the helm of the IFP for Prince Mangasuthu Butelezi. Is this what Velenko Sinitlavisa is in for, or will the IFP be, be more rigorous in uh, electing uh, different leaders, giving the party a different vision uh, for the future? Well, look, the dis narrative and discourse that's out there seeks to say that Prince Butelezi has been in the position because. Uh, he has imposed himself. That's not the case. We've been having conferences, and the conferences have been electing him um, and other leaders of the party to the positions um, that are available for election. And so he has been serving at the behest of the structures. At times, uh, he would um, indicate that he's not available, and the party would request him uh, to continue. Uh, in 2017, after we had asked him to lead the transition in 2012 at a conference, by the way, um, in 2017, uh, he convinced in the meeting of the NEC, advised the NEC that he would not be available for the position of president come conference uh, and to give the party then the time um, to set into motion the processes, um, or the final processes rather, of the transition. And that's what we have been busy with. The nomination of Belenko Sinitlabisa arises out of that process, in fact, which the party had set into motion. So Prince Butelezi has led the party very well. To, he has given the vision we need has given the direction, he has groomed the crop of leadership, he has made a meaningful contribution to the discourse of South Africa's struggle for freedom and, for, and democracy and has been a voice of reason in our democratic dispensation. As I'm saying now, he was the leader of the IFP when we registered growth in 2016. He led the IFP campaign um, in 2019. He leaves the party on a stronger footing and he has indicated that he is available to give guidance to ensure that the transition takes place in a manner uh, that um, will satisfy him as the founder because he's got a vested interest having founded this party to make sure that um, his dream and vision doesn't die. And we can assure South Africans that Kumit Velenko Sinitlabisa has got the fullest support of the IFP structures as we now go into the new phase of the IFP under his leadership. We are approaching the elections in 2021-2024 and he will be leading that charge. And so the transition that um, the IFP is undergoing has been well managed, has been a, a, a dictate of the highest decision making structure, which is conference, which laid into motion a roadmap to a smooth leadership transition. Principal Telezi can look back at this transition and be satisfied that he has done very well in ensuring that he leaves a party united in its cause and purpose in the service of South Africa. And But what is important is the IFP pays tribute to Principal Telezi for um, his stellar leadership in the IFP. You will recall that um, in the face of intense vilification, even from the media spaces themselves, uninformed and ignorant interpretations of the party processes and leadership and uh, misreadings of the factual uh, nuances and narratives of history, despite all those odds, um, he has served this country, has served the IFP. So we say to him, well done, good and faithful servant, and we will do justice um, to his vision. All right, well, thanks very much uh, for your time. A pleasure talking to you as always. Always and all the best with your conference this weekend. That was the IFP's Mkuleko Hlengwa.